Welcome back Troglodytes to another special edition of Trogly's Guitars. Today we have the 1952 reissue which is kind of a tribute to Les Paul and the original design of the Les Paul. So when Les Paul passed away in August of 2009, Gibson wanted to commemorate his life in a special release and they released something that looked very similar to this except for the 2009s they just had a straight up uh, gold top, still the mahogany back and sides, but with a, a natural lacquer over it. And they had the typical black veneer over the Gibson headstock and your typical Gibson logo. No fancy case, nothing like that. They had a truss rod that looked similar to this, but it said tribute on it. And that's kind of where they left it for the 2009 series. So if you're looking for a more traditional spec 52 type reissue, those are definitely interesting ones to seek out. But this is one they did a little bit later on. This is a 2013 model, so uh, quite a few years after he's passed. They decided to do a, you know, a little bit more special run, to say the least. They gave these guys a special case. They gave a special pick guard here. You can see it has Les Paul's full name on it, as well as his birth date and uh, Unfortunately, his death date as well and they gave it a very cool looking headstock here uh, it is a silk screen it's just a gold silk screen so I mean it is kind of a standard usually I look down upon silk screens but since it has you know Les Paul's face and his signature there I think this looks okay now I've seen a few of these for sale there were only 400 of them made once again and I never thought too much of it. I mean, this one came up, it was for sale at a decent price, so I thought, well, I think this would make a really good review. I've always wanted to try a trapeze tail piece out. This is a very interesting Les Paul. Uh, it's basically a recreation of the 1952 Les Paul. If you're not familiar with how it goes, this is what the first Les Paul looked like. It had this trapeze tail piece similar to some other arch tops of the day. And Gibson, despite what Les Paul wanted to do, made it so instead of top wrapping like it is here, it uh, wrapped on the bottom and they got the neck angle wrong. So you couldn't really palm mute on the original 52s and early 53s. But the evolution of the gold top, it goes looking from this, then it goes to a wrap around tailpiece. And then you start seeing the uh, you start seeing the traditional ABR one and stop tail piece. That's usually what a 57 is referred to as. And then obviously a little later on they went to humbuckers. So this is the very first original design of a Les Paul. So this one, it's got once again your trapeze tail piece, your P90 pickups. I mean it's a great rocker guitar. All right, we'll take a look at the condition here. Uh, being a kind of a more metallic finish, it's very prone to finish checking, so there is quite a bit of checking on this, but, you know, nothing too incredibly bad. There's one spot I will want to point out, but the headstock, you do have some very light edge wear. I mean, it's not a lot, nothing that I can really, you know, point out and say, yes, this is wear, but it's just got a little bit of wear and tear, but overall, nothing too bad. Now this headstock always kind of baffled me when I would see it in photos. It just looked kind of plain to me, but I'm hoping that this kind of shows you that there's a little bit of figuring to this uh, top veneer of the headstock, and there's a lot of wood grain running vertically. Uh, what's really special when you're playing it is you see the gold on the side of the headstock and with the neck. I don't know, it just really, it looks a lot better in person than it does know in photos so I definitely do like this little tribute to Les Paul up here I think it's cool and uh, on these 2013s it says Les Paul on the truss rod cover instead of tribute I'm honestly I kind of prefer that the nut on this one has been replaced you can see there's some uh, minor finish damage on the sides not a lot it looked professionally done however it looks like uh, when they install the nut they had cut the slots too deeply, so they did that. I think it's like a baking soda type solution where it fills the nut in again and then they do it correctly. So it is cut correctly now. But uh, there was a little bit of residue on the fretboard of that other stuff. I cleaned that off. It's looking good now. So fretboard is a beautiful rosewood. I've just oiled and cleaned the frets. 
fret show very minor wear. It's definitely a nice playing guitar. A little bit of light fret buzz here and there, but nothing your own personalized setup wouldn't uh, cure. I mean, it's definitely a fine player as it sits, but I'm sure you could tweak it just a little bit to get it even better. Once again, P90 pickups, special pick guard, trapeze tailpiece. I had to learn a little bit about this trapeze tailpiece. Um, I thought, you know, from the looks of this, it looked like it was kind of drilled into the top. And that's kind of how it was, but you know, I was kind of surprised when I took the strings off. This thing just came off. Those little thumb wheels, they're not secured to anything. Right there they're not secured to the top at all they'll just come right off so if you really wanted to uh, depending on the neck angle and how you do it you could take the trapeze off and all you'd have left are these uh, two holes on the bottom and you could give yourself a wrap tail if you wanted to take it to a luthier and get it like that but overall the top of this guitar is in good shape I mean we'll run the light over it here just some minor play wear, I mean, nothing too major. I do want to point out the top carve of this baby. I mean, look at that belly, it's pretty nice. The photos, my photos didn't do any justice. I caught a few that really showed off the uh, belly of the beast here. I mean, like, here's a nice angle so you can see it. I mean, this really is a very nice feeling guitar. I almost want to, like, uh, give it to my luthier, have him just age it, because then it'd look even cooler. But I, I really do like this pure gold finish. Continue on around here so you can see the condition. But I mean, it's cool. They've got the little thumb bleeders on here. I mean, it is a short neck. It's not a long neck historic tenon or anything like that. But overall, I mean, this is still, I would say, collector's grade, but it does have a few Back at the headstock here, serial number 10253036.9, made in USA. Uh, something I want to point out here is there's a defect from the factory here. At least that's what I think it is. If you look on the in, you can see there's like three dashes through it. And there, it's underneath the finish is what it looks like. So it looks like this was kind of dinged up a little bit at the factory, believe it or not. You have your uh, Klusen Deluxe tuners. Uh, there is a little bit of sticker residue at the back of the uh, headstock here. I, I could probably clean off. I didn't do that. Uh, this neck is huge. It is definitely what I would consider more towards baseball bat territory. It's a 50s style profile for sure. And once again, all gold finish on the neck. I mean, it's in good shape. Light play wear and all that. Now the one thing on the neck is up here, there is a finish check line running from here and it kind of runs down, really just in the finish, see it there. It looks bad, it, it really does, I won't lie, but it is just a finish check. You kind of got that in the uh, cutaway area here. You have some right here. And there's just a few of them along the sides, you can see on the sides where it kind of runs along the binding where it truly ends and the body begins. But I mean if you don't mind some finish checking, this one's not too bad. It's all original except for the switch tip. Uh, the guy that shipped it to me, uh, switch tip got destroyed in shipment. That happens all the time. If you don't take these off for shipment and pack it away separately in the case, what happens is they get like uh, hit against the top of the case if it's being jostled around or anything, they just shatter into a million pieces. The original switch tip is included, but good luck gluing that thing together. It's in quite a few different pieces. So this is one I had lying around in my parts drawer. It fits, it works. Uh, full disclosure, uh, somebody had strap locks on this guitar at one point in time, and they had upgraded the input jack plate here to metal. I just restored it back to the original stuff because it's a lot easier to sell guitars that way. Uh, one thing to mention is on the original jack plate here is there is a crack in it right there from over tightening so nothing too bad one other thing I do want to uh, discreetly point out here is there is some staining to the finish right here that wasn't pointed out to me you know directly Crap. that's from a strap that's just laid on the guitar for a while and it kind of discolored the finish I wasn't able to polish it off or anything, but that's the only occurrence of that on this guitar. So I would say that's probably the worst of it for this guitar. 
Overall, I would say it is in very clean condition, but it's definitely one you can take and play. So overall, I'm impressed. I thought this was a really good guitar. The only thing I have against this guitar is it's absurdly heavy at almost 11 pounds. That's kind of unheard of for a modern era guitar. And I don't think the original ones were quite that heavy, but I mean, obviously there were some that were heavy as well. So overall, would I suggest getting one of these? Yes. If you don't want to or you can't afford one of the original ones, I think all original examples go for around 14 to 15,000 now. You can find some butchered ones for around 10 grand or a little less. But if you can't afford one of those, I think this is a very solid option. I mean, if you're not a big fan of this headstock, go for the earlier edition one. It doesn't have the special case, but hey, then you have a, a more stock looking guitar. So overall, very cool guitar. I do suggest checking one of these out. We'll take a look under black light here. Obviously, we're not going to see too much. It might show the uh, finish checking here along the headstock a little better. You can see that line flowing up. That's just finish checking from around the tuner washers. It's caused kind of by over tightening sometimes, but it is there mainly just around there. I thought I remember seeing one over there, but the rest of what you're kind of seeing is just wood grain. The top's in good shape as you can see here. Luckily there's none of that finish checking on here. Back of the guitar here, you can see everything's good. No breaks, cracks, or repairs. Everything's fine there. You have the back of the guitar. Fine shape as well. On the side here, you can see that finish check line once again. Not been touched up or anything. And you can uh, see the other one that's light so you can see it a little better as well. But, I mean, overall, it's a clean example if you can live with a little bit of finish checking that you don't always see. This one on this scale says 10 pounds, 9 ounces. Uh, my other scale said 10, 10, so it's definitely around there. This guitar does come with its original case. And I do want to take a minute or two here just to look over this case. When I was ordering this guitar, I really thought, okay, it's just your standard Gibson USA case, right? But no, it's completely different. I mean, I hope, you know, seeing both of them back to back kind of helps you gauge the color difference. I mean, this one's a little bit more red than most of the Gibson USA ones out there, but this is what I was expecting. This leather-like exterior on this one, a little stickier and, you know, thicker feeling compared to this one. This one feels and looks just like an old lift and reissue case. I did not realize this case was going to be so special. I was expecting a similar type handle to this one, but no, it's kind of got that lift and handle to this as well. So one, two, three, four, and a back fifth latch, and once again that handle. And then the interior is white, and it's kind of got a cool uh, pattern to it. It's kind of a leopard-like or whatnot. I mean, I really fell in love with this case. I think it's really cool. It's like a uh, more secure version of a Lifton. So they definitely kind of went all out for this guitar. I mean, it's very special. Inside the case here, you can see the original switch tip that I think that's most of the pieces. I mean, it's quite a few pieces. I don't think you can glue it back together, but you also have some of the original case candy in here. Owner's manual, silica packet, truss rod adjustment tool. And there was an initially a shirt and jacket that came with this guitar but it looks like this was never filled out and sent in. So unfortunately this guitar doesn't have that, but it does have this. Case is in good shape. It just shows light wear and tear, but I do want to point this out here is I guess that's on the I, not on the G, but this is kind of like a gold flake that they just kind of, you know, silk screen onto the case. You can see it's kind of coming up here and you can pick it off, but I definitely don't suggest doing that. So the cleans will be running through a Gibson Super Gold Tone GA30RV. The dirty tones come from a Marshall JMP1C.
If you think you might be interested in owning this Les Paul 52 reissue and tribute to the man himself, feel free to contact me on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash Trogleys, T-R-O-G-O-Y-S, or you can check out the listings on eBay or Reverb. All right, Trogly Lights, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Take care.